Scripture tells us there is a time for every purpose under heaven. God uses every season of our lives and nothing is wasted in His kingdom. Today on Better Together, Victoria Osteen, Jamie Kern Lima, Stephanie E.K. and Jeannie Muncy are joining me for a conversation about preparation and purpose. Come on, let's talk about it. The scripture talks about how for everything there is a season, right? And what I love about that is that there are some seasons in our life that we pray against. <laughs> and it's like, God, I don't want to be going through this. But we see that there's this pattern of God, that the same spirit of God that would lead you to the wilderness would also lead you through it into what, you know, whatever looks like our promise, right? That yes. something being manifested. But again, the wilderness is still orchestrated by God. Mm -hmm. And those are the times where it's just like, God, I don't like this. I'm not having fun. I want this to end. But but I've recognized that in my life, you know, for me, one of those seasons was when the Lord was talking to me about his call on my life in ministry and telling me, you know, I want you to walk away from everything. And that was hard because I'm like, I'm living on savings. I'm not, I don't understand what's going on. The only thing I was doing was volunteering in my church. But looking back at that, when I started being fulfilled, I wasn't fulfilled by what was happening around me because what was happening around me looked like uncertainty. <laughs> it didn't look fun. But the fulfillment came looking at Jesus, mm -hmm. knowing that where I'm in, that he is with me yeah. and knowing that even in the thing that I feel like I may not like or may not find happiness in, I'm seeing the purpose that it's serving for his kingdom and for his name. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about how do we enjoy, you know, seasons that look like the wilderness, how do we enjoy seasons that are not fun? I believe it's about entering into the joy of the Lord, yeah. not mm -hmm. looking for the circumstantial happiness, right? Mm -hmm. But the joy of the Lord that is steadfast, the joy of the Lord that just knowing that God, you're with me and I am serving you even in this thing that might look like a low place. I'm serving your purpose. That's where I find fulfillment from. And so no matter where God places you, whether it's a low place or a high place, whether it's a wilderness or the promised land, that you know that God, you're with me yeah. and there's a purpose for this. There's a call for this. There's a season for this and let's do it together, right? Yeah. And so I find those moments to be so beautiful because even now I think about there was a time I was on the bus I remember meeting this young boy and I knew he was in the gang. Um, he had certain colors on and it looked like he was carrying a weapon, but I was so drawn to him. He had this innocence about him at the same time. And I approached him and I said, hey, and when I was talking to him at first, he looked like he's trying to go grab something. Oh, and I said, hey, I just want to tell you that God loves you and that there's a call for your life and you don't have to settle for what people say about you. And he looked at me, he's like, my grandma tells me that all the time. Aww. And I said, and she's right. I'm like, you have a call on your life. And he almost got emotional. And I didn't know what that meant for him. I've never seen him since that moment. I've never heard from him, but I believe that that sowed the seed. Absolutely. And right there I said, God, I'm glad to be in this bus if I can reach someone for you. I'm glad that life has brought me to this moment. This is like mm. a purpose moment colliding yes. right now that this young boy needed to be reminded by the words of his grandmother and not give himself to a life of crime, right? So I just think the beauty is not waiting for something to change because that causes us to live outside of the now. It causes us to not be present with what God is doing in the now, but the beauty is to enter the joy of the Lord. God, I see you that you're with me. I see that you have a purpose for this and I want to rock with it. <laughs> yeah. So I good. have found probably that the worst times in my life has brought forth the greatest fruit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in those dark, bleak times, the steadfast love of the Lord yes. never fails. Yes. Yes. And his mercies are new every day. And that all things so doesn't mean that everything's good, but in all things, he makes all things work together for our good, even the really bad stuff, yeah. you know? And I think, again, speaking from experience and looking back and seeing God's hand, that had that not happened, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be as strong in my faith as I am today. It's those treasures in the darkness mm -hmm. that are the most priceless yeah. and the most valuable. Some of the hard times that I didn't like, like really did not like, brought such a change in me. Yes. Mm -hmm. It made me reevaluate the way I look at things, maybe the way I'll approach a relationship mm -hmm. or another relationship, 
you know, so I think sometimes those hard things can bring a change in you. Yeah, that's right. Let you look at it maybe from a different perspective if you're willing to learn mm -hmm. through the change. Because mm -hmm. there's things that I've been through that I, think, I, don't, I wouldn't want to do that again. Mm -hmm. I, I know I learned something. I don't know what exactly it was. <laughs> but you would, but, yeah, you'd never want but, to do it over again. No, you don't want to do it, but you, you can say, you know what, if that wouldn't have happened, like you were saying, yeah. I, you know, I wouldn't be the same person. Mm -hmm. You change where maybe you handle a situation differently. I mean, even family dynamics, sometimes when you go through things that are harder, mm -hmm. you become a different person to that yes. person. Yes. You know, I mean, there's just all kinds of things. I'm, I'm just imagining people right now in a hard place mm -hmm. and just to get a different perspective on that hard place, that there could be some inner change that goes on or there could be some outer fruit mm -hmm. yeah. that, you know, comes from it. Yeah. So hard times are not fun, mm -hmm. but we have to find the treasure in it. Yeah, I remember walking outside one day, you know, we were up in L.A. trying to do films, trying to change the world, and I felt like all of our intentions were great, doing something big for God, mm -hmm. yeah. changing the industry and doing our destiny and our purpose and, and just doing big things, and I believed in that, and and we just went for it, and my husband is full of faith and full of vision, and yet we were selling everything we had just to make payroll. Yeah. So we would do well on a project, and it was like doing one film at a time, and it was never a film fund. It was going to dinner, raising money, doing a film, putting it in theaters, having good success mostly, and then doing it all over again. But in the meantime, there were many times we were taking our personal cars down, taking jewelry down to get cash to go pay our beautiful staff that was hanging in there with us, you know. And I remember I was just feeling like we were doing everything that we possibly could to keep the vision going. And I remember I walked outside the side of our home and I looked over the Hanna-Barbera building that we were just pouring money into because God had led us there. And here I've just given all all of my jewelry to my husband, you know, to just go, so, just to go pay everybody. And I just said in my heart, I said, I said it with my mouth. I walk outside and I just said, God, and I'm just at the bottom going, God, if you would just keep us from scrambling so hard. And that was the word I used, just scrambling, trying to yeah. just make things happen out of a good intention of we're going to do all of this for you, <laughs> right? So all my intentions are good because we're going to change people's lives through what you do through us, right? Yeah. And when I said, if you would just keep us from scrambling so hard, I was getting ready to say, look at all that we could be doing for you. That was coming out of my mouth. And as I said, if you just keep us from scrambling so hard. And it was like the most loving two by four in the gut. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I said was, that is probably the most arrogant thing I have heard anybody ever say. And it came out of my mouth. Look at all that we could be doing for you. If only you would keep us from, and God said, don't ever think that it's anything that you do for me, yeah. but what I do on the inside of you. That's right. Mm. And that changed my world. That took the purpose and destiny thing down to right here. Yes. And that every day that we've been talking about of what is my purpose? What is my destiny? What does my daily walk look like? The Lord, it looks like steps of faith every day, yeah. overcoming every day, giving my life to Him every morning. Your mercies are new. Your grace is sufficient all of that, and that's what it looked for. And boy, it brought things down to my everyday walk of life. And I love like how it transforms us, it does. you know, yeah. because even for me, like God brought me through a season that even though I, I understood what he was preparing in my heart, you know, and learning what it means to be a shepherd, it also changed me mm -hmm. because I didn't realize that I had put so much of my identity at that time in financial stability and, fi and, and finances. And the Lord was shaking all of that off of me for me to see myself without anything, but to see who is Stephanie? Who is Stephanie in Christ? Not who is Stephanie with X, Y, and Z in Christ. 
And so when it brought me down to my core, I started em embracing things differently, <laughs> right? Because in the beginning, I wouldn't, there was a little bit of arrogance and pride when it's like, why should I take the bus? Mm -hmm. But there are people on the bus right. that God loves, that are his children, <laughs> that are in their purpose, that are serving, that are living out purpose every single day. And so it was such an arrogance of, well, why me? I, I don't want to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. And so eventually I saw that God used that moment to also rid me mm -hmm. of anything that mm -hmm. could also yeah. step in the way of serving his children. Wow. Because if I only see, um, and it's it's something that is was subconscious to me. Consciously, I'm not looking at anyone and thinking this one is better than that or never that. But subconsciously, there was something rooted in there. Mm -hmm. And so when God could use that experience to get that out of me, then as a pastor, you truly, from the depths of you, you see everyone yeah. the way God sees them. Yeah. And if you're going on a bus and it's late, I could have a car, but I will get on that bus with you, yeah. right? Because now it's not about, I'm not validated by any of the things externally anymore, but there was a time that I was and I didn't even recognize it. So the beauty in God is that there will always be fruit where he places us, yeah. but more important than even the external fruit is the fruit that is produced in us. And so it's so lovely actually. Yeah, and I love that treasures in the the darkness. Yeah. You know, I think back, um, I uh, went on this journey. I thought, oh, okay, I'm going to have a baby now. <laughs> <laughs> and my husband and I were like, okay, now's the right time. And then we went through 10 years of struggles and uh, several pregnancy losses. And it was one of the darkest yeah. times. And, you know, I'm adopted. And I remember thinking, you know, God, I, I've never met anyone that I'm related to by blood. Just let this be easy. I just want to, this will be the first person I know wow. in my life that I'm related to by blood, you know, all the things. Yeah. And year after year, and we did the, the fertility treatments, all the stuff. And it just wasn't happening. And I think those times, it's hard to see the treasures in the darkness <laughs> when you're in it, when you're yes, in the sure. darkness. Yes. And we ended up doing something I was so fearful of. I had always wanted to adopt. So we started looking into adoption as well as surrogacy at the same time. And the surrogacy path went so much quicker. And all of a sudden, we were matched with the surrogate. And I was terrified. And I was like, why am I so scared to partner with a surrogate? And the surrogate was amazing. And she's like an angel on earth and she has five mm -hmm. kids of her own. And she says her calling, like she loves being pregnant. And she's like, wow. my calling is to help another family who can't do it. And all the things were right. And I'm like, why am I so scared of this? And in this process, I realized anyone who's had people let them down in their life, mm -hmm. right? For me, I didn't realize this until I was turned inside out in this process. Um, but I realized my whole life, I always kind of was like independent, like a lone wolf, like I got this, like someone would offer help. I'm like, no, 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 I got this, I got this. Like, and I thought it was this badge of honor to kind of be like this independent lone wolf. And I realized that oh, it's not a badge of honor. What was happening was I actually deep down inside didn't feel worthy of someone else showing up for me. And I had this realization that this other woman is gonna show up for me and, and, and I don't have a choice in the sense of I can't do it on my own. Yeah. I've tried for 10 years to carry a baby and I can't on my own. I haven't had success yet and I just had to, to trust this process. And in the journey, um, She's became such a close friend and is again and called us two years after and said, do you want to do it again? And we're like, <laughs> yes. And so then we had our daughter Wonder together and our son Wilder. And it completely transformed how I saw my own worthiness in the sense of, I was like, I am worthy of other people showing up for me the way I show up for them. And in friendship, in connection, and community, it's why this show is so special, I think. You know, I think that everyone's sitting at home and sitting together in this circle. It's like we're all showing up for each other and sharing the real things and the vulnerable things and that kind of connection. And it just changed how I view friendships and the kind of friendships I feel worthy of yeah. <laughs> and pour into. And like when, it, when you said treasures in the darkness, I just, that was such a dark season. I could have never predicted that God would turn me inside out in a whole other area of my life yeah. 
that in a way had nothing to do with the struggle of the darkness I was going through. Mm -hmm. And so I just think that when we have that faith that yeah. there's treasures in the darkness, even when we're amidst yeah. the darkness. You take a negative, nowadays we take pictures with our phones, right? But when you have a negative, a picture that is gonna be displayed is developed with a negative that is only in the dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the picture of your life comes as a result of the negatives that are developed in darkness. If you shine the light on the darkness too soon, then the picture will be it's bad. Right. It will not turn out right. Mm -hmm. And so the dark places in our life are the places where we don't like, and we all have those like, I don't wanna be here, I'd rather be somewhere else. Then you have to stop and say, well, you are here, God has placed you here in this moment. How do you walk his purposes out in this moment when you feel like your bigger purpose has evaded you for however long? You have to come back to that. My purpose is right here mm -hmm. and right now, and I can make a difference right where I'm at. And as I do what I'm supposed to be doing right now, the assignment that he's given me for right now, it's like, okay, we want what is on somebody else's plate. It's like, oh, that looks so much better than what I've got. <laughs> you have not ordered me. <laughs> Could I just have some of yours, you know? But the reality is when we take what is on our own plate and we do with what the Lord has given us to in the moment, then it's not that we're not trustworthy, but we're able to see that we can be good with what the Lord has given us, and then He can expand and give us more. We're faithful in the small things, then He provides the other and brings us into a greater place. And I think what's so important about that is that Jesus is with you in your darkness. Yes. yes. You have to remember that you're never alone. Yeah. And it feels like you're alone. You feel so, I know what it is to lose babies. And at first it's like, you feel like you're the only person in the world that this is happening to. But there's so many women that live that and have to survive through that. And you just have to remember that Jesus is with you in the darkness. The one who was rejected of men, mm -hmm. spit on, mm -hmm. hated, crucified, is with you in your pain. He's with you, walking you through the valley of the shadow of death to bring you out onto the other side yes. and to fill your cup with overflowing, <laughs> you know? Sure. So I think... When we do go through those dark times, and we all have them, we've all been through seasons of just, God, this is just killing me. But you know, and then again, experience and walking through and seeing the faithfulness of God, that He was there all the time. And He's always taking you through, and He's always bringing you out on the other side to turn us into His bride. That's he right. is coming for His bride, you know, when He comes back. That's the goal is, is to be all that we can be in who God's called us to be. It'd be a shame to think you have to walk through these dark and hard times and get nothing out of it. Oh my God, you gotta grab <laughs> That's not the way God can. does that, does it. things. His, he has a purpose for everything. And it's knowing like God is not a waster, just like you said, no. right? The heart of Don't God waste is- your sorrows. Yeah, yeah. He, the heart of God would never be to bring you through all the, of this just to say, um, surprise, there's nothing here. Yeah. <laughs> no treasures no right treasure here. No treasure here. Just tricks on you, yeah. <laughs> no, but that's not the heart of the no. Father. And so I think that, you know, it is real. You know, we are natural beings as much as we are spiritual beings. And in the natural, it is real to experience, you know, disappointment, pain, even sometimes maybe feeling rejected by God or abandoned by God. Those things are real, but to not live your life by feelings, right? Yes. To not live your life by the way you perceive things. Because at the end of the day, and even when the scripture says, as a man thinks, so is he. Yes. But I love that so much because how you perceive something can become your reality. Right. And your feelings are just a manifestation of how you perceive it. And so I would even say, you know, in preparation for whatever seasons that we experience in life, to always lean on the wisdom of God. Yes. Like, Lord, I know I'm going through this. I know it sucks. I know I feel like you were unjust. Mm -hmm. But the only way that I can take a step forward today or tomorrow is to really see my life through your lens. Yeah. Yeah. And so in those moments to humble ourselves, 
right, and worship or pray or really just seek his wisdom, like, God, what is going on? And in those moments, God would always affirm us, I'm with you, right? Yes. And sometimes even studying about Jesus yes. because we forget that he went through yeah. even some of the darkest moments just as well. So it's not that we are experiencing something that he abandoned us to experience right. by ourselves. He experienced that he too. He said, God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you me? forsaken yes. me? And why that was the forsaken? only, and even when he said that all along, he was calling him father. The only time he no longer saw that connection was when he felt forsaken. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying, my father, he said, my God, my God, like there was such a disconnect. Mm -hmm. So he knows what that feels like. He knows what it feels like to, you know, when you just feel like isolated in pain, mm -hmm. right? But at the end of the day, we serve a good God because we see the other side of Jesus's story. And then maybe someone's experiencing a dark time right now and they are not on the other side of it. But I'm praying that through our stories that they would know like God is not a waster. And through Jesus's story that they would know that he's not a waster. Yeah, I think about the, you know, the scriptures that he's touched by the feelings of our infirmities. Yeah. And I think in the natural with a father and a child or a mother and a child, when you see that child suffering, no parent loves to see their child suffer through a difficult moment. But there are times you have to allow them to work their way through the process because of what it works inside of them. And I think the father is always touched by our difficult times and he feels our pain. But there are times he says, I won't leave you and I won't forsake you. I am right there with you. But this process is bringing you into a place where you're becoming the man or the woman of God that will allow you to walk and fulfill your destiny. There's some things we cannot fulfill. And I am not one about suffering. Everybody needs to suffer. I actually don't like those <laughs> scriptures. I'd like to just kind of bypass them. But the reality is, is the suffering that took place was for a in his case, was so that there was something better that was... He endured for, the cross. He endured the cross yeah. for the our benefit, that, for the joy that was set before him. And in our lives, it's the same dynamic, don't yeah. you think? Where there is sometimes there's suffering that goes on, but the Father sees, and He's right there. And He says, I will carry you through this process. And so we look for our purpose in those moments. That's right. You know, like what you talked about on the bus being... You know, you had, you said there was an arrogance about me. If I don't want to ride that bus, yeah. why well, I'm on this bus? You know, that comes to my, what you're saying, Jeannie, what you said, it kind of comes to the pack where the Bible says, you know, humble yourself yeah. okay. under the mighty hand of God. And in due season, mm -hmm. He will lift you up. And I think, how do we get through these seasons? How do we get through these tough times? Is fight them, fight them, resist them? Or do we just humble under that? You know, and I think we have to check ourselves. Okay, God, am I coming under yeah. this with you? You know, am I trusting yeah. that you can take me through this? Because in due season, you promised that you will yes. yeah. get me out. You'll lift yeah. me out, out of this circumstance. You will lift me up. Trust and so I think, you know, I just think like a lot of it, he wants to work out this pride, mm -hmm. this arrogant, this in control, that we are in control. We know what's best for us. Yeah. You know, we know we shouldn't ride the bus. We know we shouldn't have to give all of our stuff away. We know we, why is this happening to me? I don't need to change that way. But anyway, yeah. I think that's- it's about dependence on Him, isn't it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. But that's beautiful. Yeah. But I really even want to pray into that moment, right? Like praying into treasures in the darkness, right? Because on the bus is a story of treasures found in the darkness, right? Even for me. And so I really love that, but let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for who you are. Lord, you're a God that is with us in the dark. And Lord, you are the light, so you're with us all the time. And Heavenly Father, I thank you that there is, even I'm just reminded by your word that said, even the dark is not dark to you because you see the treasures, Lord God, that are hidden even in dark places. And so Lord, I just wanna pray for anyone, Lord God, that is in what they feel like is a dark season, that it's in a confusing season, a season full of uncertainties, a season that might be full of pain. Lord God, I thank you that they would know that you are not a waster 
of life. You're not a waster of moments. You're not a waster of seasons. You are not a waster of experiences. You're not a waster of even pain, oh God, that everything in you is a seed. And where there is seed, there is harvest. And so, Lord God, I thank you that they would experience the harvest, Lord God, that was sown in tears, the seeds that were sown in shame, Lord God, the seeds that were sown, Lord God, in sacrifice, they would experience a beautiful harvest. So I pray that they will trust you in this time. They will trust you and they will humble themselves before you. And so Lord, have your way. We just thank you that your peace is coming upon them right now in Jesus' mighty name, amen. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.